today, let's walk through the steps of how to make this really cute cat stuffed animal perfect for any gift. Welcome, I do sewing and DIY related content and today we are making this patchwork cat stuffed animal. So this is a pattern I actually found on Pinterest. I'll be sure to link the video in my Pinterest board in case you're interested, but I decided to take it up a notch by making it a patchwork cat. So the first step was I had to figure out what fabrics I wanted to use for this patchwork effect. So I cut out a bunch of different blues as I'm making this as a gift for my grandmother and she loves the color blue. So I took all these fabrics and then I started to piece them together to make my patchwork material. So to do this yourself, you're just going to have as many squares, rectangles as you want, and then match those straight edges together. And we're just gonna be taking seams. So this is just a lot of matching things, figuring out the design, the layout that I want it to be in, and then just playing around with all of these scrap materials. So this is a fantastic scrap buster project as you can just take whatever fabrics you have on hand and then just really start to go through the process of taking a seam, then taking another seam and building this out slowly over time. As you can see, I opted for these blues. I have a silver included. I really just wanted to make sure that none of those seams were exactly lined up on themselves. So I, once I figured that out, I then just took that straight stitch to really combine all of this fabric together to make a piece big enough for the cat pattern piece that I printed off online. So this is what my final piece looks like. So this will be the front of the cat. And then I'm just going to repeat all of those exact same steps for the back of the cat. And then just really combining all these fabrics together so that I can have my two pieces of fabric that I'll be using. Now, of course, you do not have to do any of this and the pattern specifically just actually calls for one piece of fabric on one side and another piece on the other side. I just know that I have a lot of blues and I think this will be a really fun way to add some more detail. If you do go with this Patrick method, be sure to press your fabric out. There's a lot of seams going on here, so you wanna make sure it's nice and smooth. Now here is the pattern piece that I'll be using. So this is available for free online. I chose the large cat size, and then I actually am gonna make this a little bit bigger. So I just traced out an additional inch away from that pattern piece to make it a little larger and make it the size that I was going with, as I realized that it was pretty small and the amount of patchwork I wanted there to be on there, I needed a bigger cat. Once I traced it all out though, I then just cut out the pattern piece. So again, making sure that I have those two pieces for the cat for both the front and the back. I did find the legs for this a little tricky just because they are so small and you have to really get in there. So be sure you take your time if you're cutting that out. I'd say that was probably the hardest part of this pattern was the cutting out for the legs as well as when it came time to actually stuffing the legs themselves and doing the seams for it. It's just a tiny little curve. So be sure you kind of go through that carefully. Once I had it all cut out though, it was then time to begin the process of pinning it up. So for this, you're just gonna pin all the way around, but where the tail portion is, you do wanna leave an opening. So I left about a two inch gap and just marked this with two pins. And then I just followed all the way around the pattern, pinning it all up. So again, the feet were a little difficult how the legs were, but one thing I will say is even though they were very small, I already have plans to make like three more of these cats, so it did not deter me too much. Once you have it all pinned up though, you're just gonna start and then go all the way around in one straight stitch and then stop by making sure you're leaving that gap that you will be able to turn in. Now there are a lot of curves involved with this and I do have a video up about how to best sew curves, so be sure to check that out if you are struggling. Overall though, I found that the feet were probably the most difficult part in sewing this cat, but it was doable. Once I had it done, it was then just time to go through, trim up any of my extra fabric, as well as clip the curves, which was so important, especially with those little feet, making sure that the fabric had space to move and that I wasn't actually cutting through the seams. Once I went through all of that, it was then just time to turn this right side out. And this wasn't too, too difficult. I would say that the hardest part was making sure that the feet were fully opened. So I did use a pencil and just kind of push my way through very gently so that I didn't pop any of those seams along the way. Now it was time to figure out where I wanted the eyes and the mouth to go. So you could have done this beforehand, marking it before I did any of the sewing. I didn't wanna do that though, since I needed to make it slightly bigger since I made the cat pattern a little bigger. So I went through it at the end. You can see that I've marked it in yellow and then I got some stuffing and I'm just going to start stuffing up the cat. So again, this is where it got a little difficult with the feet and the ears. So I just very carefully, you know, stuffed all of that up, especially using the pencil or if you have like a stuffing tool, sometimes they actually have these little wooden stakes that you can use to help push the fabric through. But once I did that, it was then just time to do a hand seam to close up the 
cat and then begin the fun little embroidery details. So I use some embroidery thread and just kind of traced the hand stitching method to get the whiskers as well as the mouth. I didn't really use a template for this, I just free handed it and I thought that it gave it a really fun homey looking effect. Once I did that, it was then just time to add some eyes. I am one who is all for adding buttons for eyes, so I found some yellow buttons that I'll be using for the eyes. I think it will have like a really fun cat looking effect, especially having the stitch going up and down like that. And then I just repeated that for the second eye, so going through, sewing that eye on very carefully using the same thread as I used for the mouth. And then I had this really fun peach ribbon. I thought it'd be a really fun contrast with the blues. So I just tied that on as one finishing touch. Here is what my cat looks like though. I think it turned out so cute. The face looks so homey and fun. And I love how the patchwork looks too for these different fabrics. I will be sure to include the pattern for this in case you're interested as well as my Pinterest board that has more ideas. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you next time.